when we hear the word official, we often think of something or someone with authority, and we usually will accept an official verdict, diagnosis, or an outcome. Uh, for example, when someone's heart quits beating, then a doctor will officially declare them to be deceased. And in biblical times, the Jews had their own tradition of declaring someone to be deceased. Uh, the official teaching of that day was that the soul would linger near the body for three days. And so on the fourth day, the possibility of that person returning to life was officially impossible. They were declared officially deceased. And we see this in John chapter 11. And so let's read there in John 11, starting at verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he, talking about Lazarus, had lain in the grave four days already. So did you catch that? The writer here, John, is intentionally putting that fourth day in there to show us that Lazarus, according to the Jews, was officially dead. His situation was officially hopeless as far as him coming back to life. And so today in this devotion, I want to change your mind, if I can, about the term officially impossible. And there's been many things throughout history that were officially accepted as fact. And there was a time that scientists declared that the earth was officially flat. And we know that to be definitely not the case. In 1850, a Hungarian doctor uttered three words that the medical field officially deemed as nonsense. And those three words were wash your hands. And back then, that was just considered crazy, and he was even labeled as such. Uh, it was considered impossible back then that somebody could contact germs and even die as a result of infections due to microscopic bacteria. And uh, my goodness, where would we be today had it not been for somebody that recognized that fact? But again, officially, he was declared crazy back in 1850. And in 1895, uh, leading scientists officially declared that the prospects of flying machines were impossible. And eight years later, just eight simple years later, Orville and Wilbur Wright, we all know, proved him wrong when they took off at Kitty Hawk. And the point I'm trying to make here is that official facts can't always be trusted. Even today, the world will scoff at us when we say we've made a declaration of faith in Jesus Christ. And atheists, they'll insist that they only believe in facts. They don't believe in faith, they believe in facts. But there's something seriously flawed with that notion because the issue, it's not really between facts or faith. Whether you're a saint or a sinner, you will place your faith in something or someone. And the issue is choosing where we'll place our faith. So then we'll have to answer the question once we come face to face with that reality of where will I place my faith because I'm, I'm going to believe in something. The issue becomes and the question is, will we believe God or will we believe man? And there's a lady that's from here in Oklahoma. In fact, I don't even know if she's still living, to be honest with you. This, this story happened years ago. She had gone blind and the doctor told her that both of her eyes were dead. He said, your eyes have died basically and there's no hope for your situation so he was basically telling her uh going along with the title of this devotion that her situation was officially impossible that she would ever see again but this dear saint chose to believe god and she and her church family banded together in prayer for her healing and i don't know how many months or years they prayed but God restored this lady's vision and she began to see with perfect clarity. God restored her vision completely. I'm not for sure if it was 2020, but I do know her vision came back to the degree she could see just as normally as anybody. But here's the good part. This is what I love about her story. When she went back to the doctor for an examination, 
he told her after he did his examination, he said, ma'am, there's no possible way that you can see. He said, your eyes are still dead. And this dear lady, she said, doctor, you can put whatever chart you want to put in front of me and I'll read you every line of that chart. I can prove to you I'm seeing. So even if it was impossible with men and impossible according to that doctor, it was possible with God. And during this devotion, I'm sure your mind has probably already focused in on a situation that right now you, you probably consider to be officially impossible. And you may even have an official document in your home right now that would state the fact that according to man, your situation is impossible. But can I remind you again, there is nothing impossible with God. In fact, we have a, a pastor friend. He also had went to the doctor a few years ago and the doctor told him, he said, I hate working on you church people. He said, because we'll do the x-rays and I have proof that there is a problem. And he said, but you church people do that praying thing. And when you come back, the problem's not there anymore. So in a sense, it kind of made that doctor aggravated that with him being the official and he said, this is the way it is. It's officially this problem. But we all know the higher official can step in and say, well, this is what man has said, but this is what I have to say about it. And I'm thankful we serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And friend, we've accepted, I believe we've accepted too many situations as officially impossible when God is saying, only believe. And when I was studying for this devotion, that's what kept coming back to me, only believe. And one thing to remember about the story of Lazarus, and this is what I want us to get out of Lazarus' story. We didn't read all of it for the sake of time, but if you'll notice, you Bible readers will notice, Jesus waited, and every Jew in that region would have declared that Lazarus was officially dead. So Jesus waited not because he had no desire to be there. He waited intentionally because he wanted to perform, if I can put it this way, he wanted to perform an official miracle. Nothing that the Jews would say was chance. There was no doubt about it. In their minds, Lazarus was officially dead. That situation was officially hopeless. But we know God likes to work when nothing else will. So can I ask you this today? Why would we ever believe a situation to be hopeless when God is our hope? There's a song that says, all my hope is in Jesus. In Romans 15 and 13, I love it when it says, now the God of hope, he's the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So Christian, will you take courage today in your officially hopeless situation. I'm not sure what you would consider to be your hopeless or your impossible situation. You may even have a marriage today that you feel like is dead. You may have a child that you would, the, the devil would love to make you think this child's never gonna come back home. And I'm not talking about just a physical home. I'm talking about home in the shelter of God's arms. Can I tell you today, nothing is impossible with the Lord. Time doesn't matter to the Lord. Distance doesn't matter to the Lord. There is nothing impossible. To man it may be, we know that. And according to man's ability, there's a lot of things that are impossible. But with God, all things, and can you quote that with me, that verse? All things are possible.